Conrad Kaiser joins us, the CEO of Clarion. Conrad, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Good to see you, Karen. There's a lot to talk about. We were just having a conversation there on stage about the E, the S, the G, the different components here. But the big backdrop to that threatens some of this agenda on purpose is the macroeconomic environment. Yeah. What are you seeing this year? Yeah, the macroeconomic environment has certainly last year not helped. So it was very much in Europe about energy security rather than energy transition. Um, we need to get back on that energy transition agenda. And uh, that's what I'm also going to see this year. In terms of uh, some of the uh, moves from China to reopen, many are citing that as a positive, that it could be uh, the uh, element that avoids the, the really strong downturn that some had put in a worst-case scenario. What are you witnessing in terms of that China reopening thing? Yeah, in terms of China reopening, for, for us, for the business, it's a very big positive. So the lockdowns were a serious break on the China economy. Before Christmas, when COVID started to spread again, we all were afraid of severe lockdowns. The fact that they opened up so quickly, but also the fact that this wave spread so quickly, but is in fact already, the first wave is already behind us for business is a positive. Is this just a story around growth? Because, you know, what we've seen with re reopening in the West, that supply chains started to fix a little bit, demand came back, but also that has pressure on the imports around energy and transportation. Does China pose a, a threat on the inflation side with this reopening? Yeah, you see that already, actually. If you look at commodity pricing, it is already going up. Uh, if you look at the recent days, and this is in anticipation of a, of a stronger pickup in China than previously expected. Certainly also, if you look at the energy situation in Europe, uh, we have been lucky not only with the mild winter, but also with the fact that we could actually source LNG, uh, that there was no competition for that. With China coming back on stream strongly, you'll see competition for LNG. And yes, that will pose um, a certain threat. What's your view more broadly though on inflation? Do you think we're getting to the point where central bankers might be glimpsing some positive information coming their way? Yeah, if you look at inflation, what we saw last year already in Clarion in Q3 was sequential deflation on the material side, and we guided for a continued trend on that, and that's indeed what we see. So for us, key items, uh, oil derivatives like ethylene propylene, are coming down. We don't see it yet on wages. If you sort of look later in the year, uh, we see that trend actually uh, continuing, particularly with weakening demand in Europe. Now. The numbers that I hear here at Davos about uh, back to 2% inflation, that I think um, is not entirely realistic. So bumping to get back to that point because of the China theme as well, no doubt. Bumping to get back to that point. And I think there's some structural challenges if you talk about decoupling, if you talk about uh, the, the cost to basically fight climate change. I think there are some, some, some fundamental challenges which, which, which mean historic sort of extremely low inflation may not, not come back quickly. One of the other big themes here in Davos has been supply chain resilience. To what extent do we see nearshoring, friendshoring? You've doubled down on investments in China, the opposite yeah. of what a lot of companies are doing. What gives you the confidence to reinvest there despite some of the trade issues, concerns around what we've seen with these lockdowns, whether we truly are done in terms of COVID restrictions? Why are you going after more investments in China? Yeah, Karen, last year we announced actually two new investments in China, 80 million for a new surfactant plant, 40 million for a new flame retardant plant. For us, that is actually making our business more resilient in China. For us, the Chinese market is an important one. It represents roughly 40% of chemicals globally. So it's a market we cannot ignore. And actually treating China as an export market is not a sustainable setup. So with a level of decoupling, it is important to be in China for China. So these investments make our business actually in China more resilient. I want to tackle ESG, but in particular the G. In just the past week or so, the uh, Switzerland exchange, SICT, has opened an investigation into your company. Uh, claims are around whistleblowers, the reporting of standards, uh, disclosure of price-sensitive information. How serious are the allegations? Well, this is not news. So this is uh, relating to the restatement that we had to do at the beginning of this year. This was an accounting issue that was dating actually back uh, to 2021. Uh, and then actually, if you restate your numbers, which indeed we had to do at the beginning of the year, then there is a standard standard procedure that you have such an investigation by six have all the procedure been followed around this restatement? Did we timely uh, announce this to the market and things like that? Well, let's tackle the other parts of the ESG, the, the E part in particular, sustainability. Such a huge push to, to make progress at this stage. How is your company 
thinking about hitting climate goals? Yeah, for us it is uh, a significant opportunity. Uh, so if you look at the product range of Clarion, we are uniquely positioned to support the green hydrogen economy through our catalyst. We're uniquely positioned with our surfactants, which are largely bio-based or renewable-based, and our additives very much enable chemical recycling and mechanical recycling. What you saw last year already is in our gross, which we were very proud of. Uh, we haven't closed for the year and reported on it yet, but Q3 we had uh, 29% um, revenue growth. What I was very pleased with, it wasn't only pricing. There was an 11% volume growth year on year. This is very much because of the sustainability uh, solutions that we offer to our customers and that triggers above market demand. We had an extensive conversation earlier on stage here at Davos at the World Economic Forum, a part of the official program, which was about how we get past some of the challenges around reporting on sustainability. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge that you're facing? Yeah, the biggest challenge, I think, is transparency. I think what is needed if we are, we need to fight climate change. Climate change is happening, so we need to fight it. So we need to low, lower our carbon footprint. I think one of the biggest challenges that we need as consumers to have full transparency on all of the products as well as some of the services that we are consuming, what is actually the carbon footprint of these products and services. Only then we can make choices, only then we can truly create a market for low carbon or carbon free products. IFRA says there is a global standard coming by June this year, would that be welcome? Yeah, I think any standard that increases transparency in this area is welcome. Uh, and I think it is one of the important steps. First, we need transparency on carbon footprints. We obviously need solutions, and we're working on that. And actually, from a technology point of view, we have solutions. But how can consumers be asked to pay premium for carbon free or carbon low products if it's actually not transparent? How do you think you're going to fare in an apples by apples comparison versus peers? Because that's what it will deliver. Yep. Are you worried about that? No, oh, we see that actually as an opportunity. So we are supplying those products that enable our customers to actually lower their carbon footprint. I really appreciate your time here in Davos. Thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. Around the set, Conrad Kaiser with us, the CEO of Clariant.